Hi, hello, welcome everybody to my new video. Today will be a slightly different topic. I will not talk that much about EMC. I will talk about electromagnetic simulation in general on a quite different topic. Actually, some time ago, I saw a posting on LinkedIn where uh, a guy there from rather from the fluids domain has said how to solve a maze without uh, AI use Laplace equations. OK, so he is using the uh, uh, a field calculation, probably here more in the fluids to solve a maze. And I really liked this idea and I said, uh, if the fluids can do it, of course, the electromagnetics will be also able to do it. So I set up a model. Uh, it's a little bit different than in the fluids domain, because in the fluids domain, of course, the fluid can travel only through 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 the hole in the maze. Right. So you have walls and a hole. While what I do is a different approach. I, I use conductivity. So the question would be, is there a conductive path in such a maze, and I'm not using a 2D, I'm using a three-dimensional maze, as you can see, is there a conductive path from the left to the right? And that can be very easily calculated by using a stationary current solver, right? So we just need to make sure, is there a current path which connects this plate to this plate? And um, the stationary current solver, it actually also solves Laplace equations. So if we take a look at, oh, this is actually my, my PhD thesis, which I wrote 2007, you can see that's exactly the Laplace equation which we use. And the kappa here is the conductivity. We have, of course, some source term. And if we solve this equation for a potential, from the potential, we can get the electric field and the and the current. What's important here is that we we use the Laplace equation is solving a scalar potential. So phi is a scalar potential, which is different from most of the simulation that I showed to you, where we really do a full wave simulation. And in the full wave simulation, you have to solve for the for the three components of the electric and magnetic field. While when it's a scalar equation. You only solve you, you only solve a scalar equation. So instead of having three degrees of freedom for every mesh cell, you have only one degree of freedom, which is of course much more efficient and much faster to solve. So how did I set up the model? Actually, let's go back here. I wrote a very simple script. You can see it. it's called create material, which builds such a maze. So it randomly it it is rasters uh, a space and randomly then picks. Uh, goes through all this raster and then creates a, 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 a random number and compares it to a function which I call a, a value which I call density. And if the random number is above the density, then it will not place the, the, the small cube. If uh, it's below, it will place a cube. And in this way, I can get such um, kind of random uh, setup. Okay. And then what I do is the, also already the script does it for you. It defines so-called current ports. So I said, okay, there is a current of one ampere going in on this side and a current of one ampere going out on the other side. That's simply it. And then the solver is trying to find a solution for the current flow through this through this random um, maze. Let's call it a maze through this maze. There is a tiny overlap between them to make sure that you know there are no corner effects that you can really see how the current flows through there. And in order to solve this, actually, I mean most low, most low frequency solvers they are using so-called so -called tetrahedral mesh, but here everything is rectangular. So I use actually a, a pretty <laughs> let's call it outdated solution. It's frequency domain finite differences. I use a rectangular mesh. It, it works much better. I don't need to put a, a tetrahedral mesh around the structure simply because everything is rectangular. So with this, we can get a pretty fast solution. Let me switch to one which I have pre-calculated. Actually solving this it just takes 30 seconds on my laptop. And I have a setup here why I have prepared the setup. It's not because of the simulation time, but because the thing is random. I wanted first to show you how a solution looks like. So we can see in this we have a, a current density and there is a there is a solution. So the current can flow from from the one side to the other side. We can also do a plot which maybe looks a little bit nicer. We switch to the streamlines. OK, you can see exactly how the current finds a way from the left to the right hand side. 
this is pretty neat and I like how, how these things look like. But the next question would be what happens actually when there is no conductive pass? And I can generate this so you can see now my um, the script which generates the structure has been completely parameterized. So let's choose a lower param a, a lower density, okay? So I said we use 0 0.05. We just need to update the structure. This won't take long. And now it's randomly placing the this this bricks with less density because I have chosen a different density. And now if I start the solver, you can see it it will take just maybe 30 seconds for meshing. Well, we will see probably, let's hope, I don't know, it's still random, probably there is no pass from the left to the right hand side because with such a lower density, simply the randomly created uh, bricks, they will not connect from the left to the right hand side and we will see it. So you can see it's now meshing. In a second the solver will start. So what, what will happen when there is no pass? You guess it, the solver will not find a solution and that's exactly what you can see here. So this so-called iterative solver, you see it's starting to diverge. It's not generating any solution. And in the in the script I did, I I simply limit the number of iterations the solver is allowed to run just to find a termination criterion. I set it to 3000, which is a lot for the simple models. But if we move on to bigger models, it's um, it will take uh, it, it will sometimes take 2000 to 3000 iterations. So you see the linear equation solver reached the maximum number of iteration. It did not convert simply. It could not solve the uh, the system I gave it because there is no conductive path. So we can, of course, now let's say increase this to something like a density of 0.2 and I can run the solver right away. So it will update the model. You see now it's much more dense and probably there will be a pass now from the left and right hand side. So let's mesh it one more time. Let's run the solver. You see it's it's pretty quick and also the solution will be much quicker because if the solver converges, it, it happens much faster. So now processing, now it's meshing the whole thing and we will see that, of course, if you increase the density, of course, there will be not only a, a single pass going from the one side to the other, there will be multiple paths. So we will see it in a second once it's finished. You see, that's all running on a laptop. It's a very, very fast uh, simulation, actually, because it's a scalar, uh, a scalar equation we are solving. And also the meshing with this hexahedral approach, it means it's a little bit outdated, not much used in the industry. For this particular model, it's actually much faster than using a tetrahedral mesh. So we see, okay, now the meshing is done. It's merging the results and it should now, that's it. Now it's solved because of course there is now a pass. So the solution works much faster. You see it only took 100 iterations and now reached the accuracy of one in minus six. And we can look at this current density here. So you can see now they are much more paths. So if we go to the uh, arrow plot, probably we'll see many paths. There are them, there are many paths through this maze, which allow a current flow from the left to the right hand side. And how you could evaluate this, of course, I can crank this up a little bit. You can see how you could evaluate this, of course, if we move to a practical application, you can calculate, of course, the uh, the particular um, uh, resistance from the left to the right hand side, which will be so you can see here the resistance is uh, completely wrong simply because it did not converge for this solution. But if we take this one, you see the resistance from the left to the right hand side is something it's, it's very low. It's uh, 0.7 micro ohm, but the structure is small and the conductivity is large. So of course, if you want to have more uh, realistic results, you would need to uh, assign the proper conductivity and the proper particle size. So what I really like about this is it's it's pretty aesthetic. Let's move on to something which is uh, uh, which now previously I had a, a size of this bricks of five millimeters, so it's twenty times twenty times twenty. Now I have reduced the size; it's uh, fifty times fifty times fifty of this bricks. And what I really like how how nice this plots look like, right? It's very aesthetic to see the paths that are created and that are calculated by the solver. So this is uh, for a density of 0.1. You can see there is basically one entry point on this side, but there are multiple exit points on the other side, which is very nice. And you can see also that there are some kind of 
loops created in this flow. It's it's very aesthetic. And uh, just to just to show you this on another model. So this is the same. Of course, it's randomly generated mazes. This is one again with the uh, with the 50 times 50 times 50 mesh. You see, it's created this kind of loops where the, also the current is flowing first in, in, in a path inside and then continues to flow, which can happen in such an arrangement. And finally, I made also one which is very, very fine. This is basically 100 times 100 times 100. It's a very fine solution and you can see it's almost looking somehow like <laughs> arteria in a human body <laughs> where you can found the where you find the the path for the current here to flow. So I really enjoyed this generating this kind of um, beautiful images from the from the solver. But of course, this can also have a more let's say a more professional application in terms of, for example, materials. Right? If you want to analyze what would be the what would be the resistance of a material which has some dissolved conductive particles, for example, a, a rubber with conductive particles. That's where we come back to EMC, actually, because that could be uh, like um, a, um, a, a rubber part which you can use to seal an enclosure, for example, and inside this rubber part, you have dissolved metallic particles. And now the question would be how what is the what is the density of particles required to make sure that the particles inside the rubber can can carry the current and lead to shielding and that's exactly what i did here so back to this 50 times 50 model and i run it parametrically so you can see i run it with a with a density of 0 0.07 with a density of 0 0.1 and a density of 0 0.15 and then i run for each density 10 different random setups of the, of the bricks. And we can take a look at these results. So first thing is we want to check does there uh, is, is does does a conductive path exist? And I, I picked just first the one with the parametric density with the density of 0 0.07. And you can see that all 10 solver runs with 0 0.07 density did not converge. So basically there was not a single path for this particular density. If we now move to the density of 0.1, it becomes quite interesting because you can see there were four setups where there was the conductive current cuts where the solver did converge and the rest six setups did not converge, which means there was no current pass. And now if we increase the density to 0.15, you can see that actually all solver runs did converge, which means that for this density setting, you always had a conductive path between the left, left and right hand side. And from this, we could, for example, take a look, like I mentioned. So this is the voltage, but because I use one ampere as an input, it's, it's at the same time, not only the voltage, it's also the resistance of the setup. So you can see for the density of 0.15, we have some resistance around uh, something at two uh, two micro ohm for this particular setup. Again, it depends, of course, on the size and it depends on the conductivity of the small pieces that are placed there. But you see, that's that's what you would expect if you have this particular density. The resistance of the bulk material will be in this vicinity, and then we can go to the to the 0.1. Of course, now this is uh, we, we have to select only the ones which have converged. So this is this one, this one, this one, and this one. So 5, 14, 26, and 29. These are the only ones. The, the resistance calculated for the ones which did not converge, what there was not a pass, the resistance is not valid. We cannot use it. So 5, 14, uh, 5, 14, 26, and 29, right? These are the four that did converge. And then we look at the voltages and you can see with this particular density, the resistance would be 0.2 milliohm, while for the higher density, it was two microohm. So you can really use this to, to calculate like bulk conductive properties of such a material where you have immersed uh, conductive uh, particles. 
which I think is very nice and I really enjoyed to run this simulation and uh, to write a short script on this and um, in the next days I will post this model in the Simulia community. You will get the script, you can play around if you like to. Again, the model runs on a laptop. It's not very time consuming, so you can do your own experiments with this model. That's it what I wanted to show to you. I hope you have enjoyed a slightly different topic today. And again, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and see you in the next YouTube video. Bye bye.